Venice is a unique city. If you think how it can hold up its palaces, its imposing churches and bell towers without sinking. For its construction, whether it was a building, small or large, the Venetians had to deal with water, saltiness, mud and sand, and from these elements they succeeded with their ingenuity to build a miracle of engineering and stone. Welcome to another episode of the Enrique Venice. The city is made up of 124 islands and have been gradually populated since the 7th century BC. Venice was not born from a center that has since expanded, but from several settlements that have joined each other. The main islands of which it is made were almost independent population centers. To consolidate the foundations, wooden poles 25 meters long were planted in the unstable soil of the lagoon. Surrounded by salty mud, the wood petrified itself, forming the perfect foundation for the construction of the city. The numerous canals served both as transport routes and as drains. The daily tides cleared the canals of sewage. This is how the Venetians operated. They bounded the area for foundations with two sets of parallel pilings, about 80 cm one from the other. They filled the space in between with mud. Then they emptied from the water residues the area that had been enclosed and once dried, and then they began to plant tree trunks close to each other, so deep as to reach an underground layer of solid caranto, or sedimentary clay, compact and resistant, laying about six to seven meters deep. The foundations are based on these series of fine, large or oak poles, about 30 centimeters in diameter, located at a very short distance in between. The interstitials between trunks were filled with shards, glass, brick pieces, various scraps, stones, kneaded with concrete. A large or elm table was applied to the equal heads. The poles stuck in the mud became so resistant and cemented together that they remained in excellent condition. The caranto, however, is less resistant than the rock, so the entire city of Venice is as if floating on a kind of deep swamp. Above the heads of the poles are fixed two layers crossed together of large wood tables, where then are placed the real foundations, consisting on a wall slightly tilted to fairly regular layers in blocks of Istria stones, a rock from the nearby Adriatic Peninsula, with very low porosity and high waterproofness. This reaches the level of the ground floor. Above the stone wall are placed either the columns or pillars or walls of the building. With this type of foundation, only the Istria stone part remains in contact with the salt water and air, while the wooden parts remain embedded in the slime of the caranto, undergoing over time a process of mineralization that make them more resistant. It could therefore happen that some buildings were rebuilt on old foundations or modified by maintaining the structure and refurbishing it, keeping the floor plans substantially unchanged. The building can be considered divided into three areas. A central area that crosses the entire building from one part to the other, called the portego, and two side areas divided into small rooms. This division was repeated for all the floors, but with different functions. On the ground floor, there was a door for representative meetings, which was added a portico on the water to allow the docking of the boats. The side areas were used as a warehouse or deposit. One or two upper floors, defined as the nobility floor, the large central doorway, became the lounge of parties and dances while the side rooms, smaller and therefore easier to warm, assumed a private destination. The top floor, finally, housed the attic, 
usually intended for servitude. Sometimes, between the ground floor and the first floor, on the side areas, there could be a mezzanine used for the commercial activities of the landlord. The noble floors are the most easily recognizable on the main facade, normally on the canal, thanks to the large windows. They normally served two noble families, usually two brothers, and had separate accesses. The floors were connected by an ingenious system of cross stairs, so the servitude and family had two entrances and two independent internal paths. Some exchange points allowed, if necessary, the transition from one path to another. The main entrances were all placed on the Grand Canal, and it is for this reason that the most beautiful decorations were dedicated to the facades on the water. Today, unfortunately, few traces of them remain. The canals, therefore, have been for a long time the only means of communication, since the bridges, built only later, have been completely absent. Much of the interior structure of the building was made of fir and oak wood, making it so flexible and more adaptable to the sagging due to its weight on the Caranto. Above the tables that formed the base of the floor, a pavement was laid suitable to absorb the oscillations and vibrations, the so-called Venetian terrazzo, consisting mainly of lime and marble pieces laid like a mosaic. The beams were richly decorated and left exposed. Almost all the palaces of Venice are identified by the name of the family that founded them or that left their mark. They were all preceded by the letters CA, C-A, to mean casa or home. Why are Venice's palaces in danger? The rising tide levels in recent years have seriously endangered the aesthetic of Venice's buildings. The biggest damage to brick masonry buildings is a rise in humidity. A wall is not much different from a sponge and absorbs moisture from the foundations through the very thin canals from which it is crossed. The salts make the situation even more damaging. These rise up the masonry dissolved in the water that then evaporates. The salt crystallizes by increasing its volume by 12 times by crumbling the bricks. The beams of the floor also suffer from moisture because the water promotes the aggression of the wood by fungi and bacteria. The traditional antidote was to insert Istrian stone blocks into the masonry. These stone of limestone origin, but very compact, served as a barrier to the humidity of ascent, but today the water level is higher and laps the building beyond the line of position stones, bypassing them and reproducing the problem. There are many solutions to this problem, such as not plastering the part usually subject to this phenomenon, allowing for greater perspiration. Another solution is the cutting of the walls, which can be a physical type, inserting a waterproof membrane capable of stopping the ascent of moisture, or a chemical type, by injecting raisins that saturate the porosity of the masonry, thus cancelling its absorption capacity. So thank you for watching. If you love this video, please subscribe and share.